and a high near 89. 68 right now. Next news at 9. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM 560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Is uh, there any hope uh, coming up with Gen Z as they make their way through college and into the workforce? Mm, very interesting. There's a big divide uh, among 18 to 29 year old men versus women in their voting patterns, as we've talked about before. So the issue really is in terms of Trump and Republicans' ability to make inroads among that 18 to 29 year old demographic, you got to get more turnout from the guys in point of fact, um, guys, it's, it's not the same margin. I mean, the Democrats and Kamala Harris enjoy a 20 plus point margin among 18 to 29 year old women, but Trump and Republicans enjoy an advantage majority of young men, 18 to 29 uh, problem is in part that, uh, 18 to 29 year old women turn out at about five and a half percent higher rate mm. percentage point higher rate than uh, do men. And so closing that gap a little bit in addition to, I don't know, doing something and I don't know what to speak to 18 to 29 year old women. Uh, maybe our next guest can help us. He is Ethan Watson, Young Voices contributor working towards a master's degree in accounting from the University of Kansas, the Jayhawks. Uh, he wrote a piece in Real Clear Politics, Gen Z should not be fooled by Kamala's sudden seriousness. Ethan Watson, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. So, I mean, you know, give us some insight. What, what, what do we do about these, uh, well, your, your uh, uh, college-age chicks, the, the girls that you go to school with? What, what, what do we do about them? Well, you know, I, I feel like, you know, people my age in general, men or women, uh, we got a little cynical during COVID, which is a whole other thing. I don't, I don't understand the psychological reasons why that happened, but I know we got cynical. And normally I see us applying that cynicism to all kinds of things in daily life. I right? don't really drink the Kool-Aid. We're just there for a little utility benefit. Uh, you know, we, don't, we go up to the guest speaker, but only because we want the free T-shirt, right? That's the thing I noticed from my generation. But we've turned that sniffer off for Kamala Harris. I think it's because she's made politics palatable again. Um, and what I, what I mean when I say that is over the last you know, 10 years, ever since people my age have been politically aware, on the one hand, you've got this political correctness, which is this ridiculous puritanical regime where one wrong turn of phrase and they'll try to ruin your life. Then on the other hand, you've got Donald Trump, who's hyperbolic and brash, hilarious, but understandably off-putting, especially to women. Um, but how I would approach this is I'm not out here to make a moral case for Donald Trump over Kamala Harris. Frankly, Donald Trump's not someone I would want to date my daughter. But the case I make when I talk to my friends is that um, he will provide us that utility that we're looking for, uh, at least better than Kamala will. And I, I don't feel like, like Kamala's policies are going to help anyone my age, man or woman, um, in this period in our life when we're trying to settle down, have a family, buy a home, um, all that good stuff. You think that like sort of sterile, uh, utilitarian argument is going to move people? I mean, you know, what, what, what I see, um, and this is up and down the age demographic um, and across the uh, gender divide, although it is much more significantly pronounced with women, particularly single women, is they want fake nice and beautiful lies. They want people being pretend nice like Kamala Harris, telling them beautiful lies about uh, what's happening and what is going to happen uh, if particular policies, to the extent that they're even articulated, are pursued. that That's it. You know, I, I, I find it hard to believe that that people would would be happy with pretend nice when they're you know all their prices are going up. At least I would hope that they don't believe that um, when their prices are going up, they can't buy a home. 
Um, and so I think, I think what people care about when it comes right down to it is, is their pocketbooks, um, is their money, is their day-to-day life. Uh, you know, people my age grumble a lot that no matter who's in power, nothing really changes. Uh, but we did see some changes over the last four years, and we got a worse economy um, and a less safe world, uh, which is another point I want to bring up is because, you know, when the world gets less safe, um, it's, it's people my age that have to go, go fight those wars. It's people my age that are traveling abroad that are, that are at, in, at risk. Um, and so, yeah, but, I it's, think... but, but, but here, but the rub is it's, it's people your age again, particularly women. I know we're trying to avoid this, but I don't want well, to. This woman wants to ask uh, a question. But, but, but it's people your age that are supporting Kamala by like a 60, 40 clip. Well, more, know, than, I'm, more I'm than that. I'm calling on people my age to, to, you know, uh, kind of turn back on that BS detector and see through this sort of in, insulting pandering with the Megan Thee Stallion and the Mark Hamill endorsement. Oh, how embarrassing is that? What's gonna do Mark better, Hamill? What's going to do better does, for us? Does anybody right? your Mark, age even know who he is? Do you know who Mark Hamill is? I mean, I mean, there was a Star Wars movie that came out there a few years go. ago. It okay. was pretty bad, but, you know, <laughs> but I, I don't know. But he was in it. Oh, so yeah, he what, was. He was terrible in it. Right, um, but what are your what are your Kamala Harris supporter friends? What, why are they, what do they like about her? Do you ever in, are you inquisitive about that? What's why are you voting for you her? Know, why are you supporting her? Well, a lot of times they, it's more of an anti-Trump vote, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, well, how can you vote for like a rapist or he's he's yeah. literally racist or something like that? And it just shows me that you know people my age have been lied to a lot. So that's why I, I don't even try to engage them on those grounds, even though I understand that that's they're, they're not right, right on any of those uh, issues. I don't try to engage on those grounds. Um, I try to just take it back to the utility arguments. Like, look, again, I'm not going to stand here and tell you Donald Trump is like a great man, like he, he, he fit to you know date my daughter, like I said earlier. But you know, when was your family better off? Was it were they better off? You know, five years ago. Um, you know, I feel like we're all enough to remember at least a little bit of how we were doing. Um, and and like you know, they grumble. I, I I take little openings when I get them right. So like we were out the other night, and everyone's like, man, this pizza used to be two dollars a slice, now it's four dollars a slice. I'm like, yeah, shocking. How did that happen? And you guys like what what could have changed in the last four years um but i think people my age are really keen you know attuned to prices um and and that they're paying a lot more and they'll only get more attuned to that as they enter the working world um and have to start paying for more of their own stuff but it's but it's but it's a brat summer ethan and taylor swift is indoors kamala and we're having fun you know, I, I I hope I hope now that she's had to get serious on her policy because people are making fun of her, uh, that people my age will sort of see her for the Joe Biden 2.0 that she is. Because she really is Joe Biden doubled down. I mean, she literally is ripping her, her policy straight off of his campaign website. Um, and, and, you know, more than that, what people my age I feel like want is – um, a, a change from the status quo. A lot of times, you know, they grumble about how nothing ever really changes, um, no matter who's in power. And, and Kamala Harris is the most establishment candidate we've ever had. And so on the one hand, that might be comforting to her, but the, to, to people my age. Mm. But on the flip side, um, you know, I mean, she's really, really establishment. And if people my age are unhappy with the status quo, we're supposed to be the change agents. Then maybe we should take a look at the bowl in the China shop that Donald Trump is um, and not the candidate that was swapped in at the top of the ticket that literally no one has ever cast a primary vote for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about these uh, uh, undergrads or recent grads. Um, uh, I mean, you know, the, the again, just the, the male female dynamics. Um, like what what it just what 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 is what is the interaction on campus like? I mean, we've seen. And maybe not so much at University of Kansas, but, you know, we've seen um, actually campuses that are very different one to the other. You know, for example, what happened during the uh, pro Hamas encampments in places like uh, Ole Miss or uh, North Carolina versus what was happening at Ivy League schools or Northwestern, some other school, UCLA. So, I mean, I just um, I wonder, you know, where you think, I mean, it's that, that utilitarian argument, the slice of a pizza, that can only take you so far because there's such an emotional quotient to this whole discussion, isn't there? I mean, that's absolutely right. And, and, and frankly, when I'm talking politics, I would prefer that we were talking about sort of the philosophical and moral implications. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think 
you know, my generation is there yet. We don't, you know, people my age don't understand, you know, the concept of natural rights versus duties and things like that. Um, so I think that's why we have to engage them on the utilitarian grounds because that's the only language that people my age really understand. Um, as far as the, the dynamic on KU's campus goes, um, it's not a really too political campus. Uh, we had like a small um, pro uh, Hamas encampment um, that lasted like two days or something until a thunderstorm came along. Um, and, uh, but, and I think I actually and just saw that we're getting haul, rid of As long as the weather's nice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then, you know, we, we're getting rid of, I just saw recently, some of like the LGBT, like sex and gender studies, like centers, or they're, they're combining them, or they're, they're paring them down a little bit. So it's not, it's not the most politically fraught campus. It's not NYU or Columbia by any means. Um, and, and honestly, it just doesn't, it doesn't come up a lot among people my age around here. Um, I think because people are afraid to talk about it. So that's kind of what, what, why I'm trying to do this and why I started doing this is I want people my age who think like I do to start speaking up a little bit because it can be daunting. It can be intimidating. You can feel like you're the only person who believes what you do. I promise you, you're not. I get so many private messages from people that I never would have thought agree with me after I've started doing this saying, we're with you. This is great. Support this. Um, and so just earnestly and honestly putting yourself out there and saying what you believe is, is how we're going to win this thing. Ethan Watson, Young Voices contributor, working towards a master's degree in accounting at the University of Kansas. Ethan, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you and hope to have you back. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. This is The Morning Show. More Chicago radio listeners are choosing. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. How can we help? Uh, hey there, we have a huge problem. Our network crashed and our entire assembly line is down. We're losing thousands of dollars an hour. Can you help? Please hold. What did they say? Uh, they put me on hold. We gotta get this line back running now. IT support, who are you holding for, please? Oh, hi. I, I need help. My network is down. I, I've been on hold for over. Sorry, wrong call. Please hold again. Oh. Sound familiar? Don't.